America's seven Project Mercury astronauts are narrowed down to three finalists in the race for the honor and the risk of being the nation's first man in space. The Air Force, the Navy, and the Marines are represented by the chosen trio. The date that one of them will first be sent aloft is brought considerably closer by a Mercury Atlas missile firing at Cape Canaveral that tests an unmanned capsule under the toughest conditions. The Atlas booster carries the capsule 107 miles above the Earth before it is plunged back to Earth at almost 13,000 miles an hour. It will undergo forces 16 and a half times greater than the pull of gravity and heat that would melt iron. The question is, if a man were inside that capsule, could he survive the flight? Afterwards, when the capsule is picked up at sea, the instruments and records indicate that a man would have lived through the ordeal. This greatly increases the Space Administration's confidence in being able to launch an astronaut safely. Meanwhile, another phase of the Mercury program is carried on at Key West Naval Station. Navy frogmen have been enlisted to give pointers to Air Force survival experts who will be called on to recover the first astronaut after his flight. Already trained in parachute rescue work, they will jump to the vicinity of the Mercury capsule and then work as divers. A dummy capsule is used for training purposes. The Air Force men are now using their scuba diving equipment as they attach flotation gear to the capsule to stabilize it. They will also help a helicopter pick up the capsule and soon it's human passengers.